All right, hi everyone. We're back. Um, all right, this is getting to be a little bit long, and that's that's fine. Um, this is Juliana. This is meandering, um, and I'm meandering through the Agatha Christie, the ABC murders. Um, I think we're almost to the final reveal. We're so close, guys. We are so very close. Um, so I'm checking my last little bit here, as it will be one of our last stops, hopefully before the end. To White Haven, please. Um, and the big reveal. Um. So last time I said that I thought it was the landlady. Arrest is She's a my main success, suspect. My other it's all suspect clear would now, be Thora Gray. Maybe one or two details. Details. Ah, mon ami, the devil is in the detail, as we say. Excuse me? Patience, Hastings. Everything will be clear once I guest arrive. Best be prepared. Slip a revolver into your pocket before they do. A revolver? But Poirot, what are you afraid of? Trust me. It is important you carry a weapon for this meeting. I will lend you mine. What about telling me what you have in mind? Surtout pas. You wouldn't be able to play your role. Wait one moment, I will bring you my weapon. Hey, look, it, it turned out that, you know, it was good that I did the thing where I did all the things. Trust in oh, Devon. Do, do, do. Oi. Every time. All right, we know that's the big game thing anyway, so I'm not feeling so terrible about it. Um, leaving it, um, to the... Hmm. Wait, why is the alligator? Hmm. All right, fine. The white ammunition are blank cartridges. The others are real bullets. I have to choose the type Great. of bullets to load. Great, Hercule. Oh. Oh, do we do this? Oh, I don't want to choose the wrong one, but I'm not going to have... I don't want to choose the wrong one, but I'm not going to have much of a choice here. I either choose to potentially kill someone or get Hastings killed. I, honestly, I'm going to go with the blanks. Um, I don't think it'll be the worst thing in the world if... Um, Revolver is loaded with real bullets. I still have time to choose blanks. Hmm. The revolver is loaded with blanks. I still have time to choose real bullets. Or not. Um. Hmm. I don't know. Hold on. We we have uh, someone available for me to ah. bounce bounce what oh, ideas up? off of. All right. So Perot has a revolver. <clears throat> Sorry. Bang, bang, usually. Right. Yeah, this game's finally getting good. Hey guys, what's up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, and so we have the choice of either blanks or real bullets. Ooh, that's tough. Right? So I chose the blanks, and I'm wondering if this is the right decision. Really? Well, because I already just ta I talked about the fact that. Um, so the choice between the blanks and the bullets means that if somebody comes Oop. in who is armed. Uh huh that it's it's potentially harmful to Hastings but I'm not sure the man who who would come armed to this situation because it is in fact the person at fault okay um 
But if they're real bullets, Hastings may end up killing the person. And I'm not sure that's what we want either. Hmm. And, I mean, uh, Hastings has been a soldier. Um, and right. This is, this is information I know because I know the characters, basically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from from movie or from TV movies. So. Um, okay. So, in, in a lot of games, especially ones like, especially thinkers like this, just the presence of a gun tends to be enough to deter some people. Especially if they're not armed. Yes, this is where I was with that. If they're not armed, that that will be it, fine. Exactly. If they're if they're not armed, that's fine. He's ready anyway. If they are armed, you potentially have some level of deterrent. So you know, you fire a blank, and the person is going to die because they think a bullet was just shot. This... And then that gives you extra time to also right. move. Okay. So I'm I'm not seeing a, a a good argument for the uh, for the real bullets in this case. Uh, yeah, no. Because if it, it if it is, I've already said that I think it's either Thora Gray or the landlady, and I don't think either of them would come armed. However, but you never know. Right, and then there's this this I, other character that I'm thinking of that might have. I think you made the right choice with the blanks. Okay. So, all right. So, Zach is here now. He's not going to save you. I'm sorry, guys. He's just not. Um, I just needed someone to bounce that off of. And... Yes, tell them I'm here after I've already <laughs> thrown in my two cents. Well, fine, fine. <laughs> just saying. Well, I, I mean, I, <coughs> I, I've been at this for a while. I'm not sure if, if everyone here is aware. I'm sure if they've been watching the last few episodes, I've been like, there's two or three more episodes. Four episodes later, I'm so sorry. Um, I left for work, and now she's here. So, um, yay. yeah. All right, so I'm going to double-check myself before I wreck myself. The light Wait. ammunition are blank cartridges. The others are real bullets. Okay, so... The revolver is loaded with blanks. I still have time to choose real bullets. All right, we're we're choosing the blanks. We are agreeing to this, and I'm gonna head give it to Hastings. Actually, I'm gonna go over here and check the mail again because yes, that that is what we do. Um. Daily Flicker, September the eleventh, nineteen thirty-five. ABC affair. Terminus Doncaster, Jap and Poirot, arrest the killer. A. B. Cust is the name of the alphabet murderer. Hmm. The police have arrested him in a hotel in Doncaster. Was preparing to kill his fourth victim, Mr. Dick Dudley Donbar, the establishment's manager. Mr. Donbar owes his life to the miraculous intervention of Inspector Chap of Scotland Yard and Detective Hercule Poirot. All right. Anyway, um... The Lancet, September 11th, 1935. General Medical Journal. The alphabet murderer is not psychotic, according to Professor Thompson. In an early issue, we claim that the alphabet murderer was not psychotic. Our assertion has just been confirmed by Professor Thompson, a Scotland Yard expert, Mm -hmm. who has spoken to the prisoner at great length. Not all obsessional killers are psychotic, he explained. It is true that Kirst has a disturbed personality and memory disorders. But his amnesia, whether real or pretended, does not alter the fact that he was perfectly lucid at the time of his acts. Therefore, he will not escape punishment. Sorry for the noise in the background. That's uh, Tyrion being the wonderful kitten cat. Adult cat that he is. Ah, some cool hair. Okay, so I think we've investigated everything other than talking to uh, Hastings and delivering him. What about telling me what you have in mind? Surtout pas. You wouldn't be able to play your role. Wait one moment, I will bring you my weapon. Well, 
Voila, I don't trust you with my weapon. It has hardly been used. It is almost new. All right, off we go. Chief Inspector, is that you? Yes. Sorry, but we haven't found anything. Have you checked the typewriter? And the packaging, the letter, and the ribbon reel. We've only found prints left by Cust and his landlady. Well, never mind. I shall make do. So, are you still going to hold your meeting? Of course, Chief Inspector. I can hear my guest coming up the stairs. Why have you brought us here, Mr. Praro? Since Cust's arrest, I thought it was all done and dusted. Miss Gray formally identified him, as well as Miss Barnard. Yes. And the stockings he sold are of the same brand as the ones found at my aunt's. This is all true. However, a case is not closed if some questions remain open. And one question is, why did the murderer send me his letters? Why did he challenge me, Hercule Poirot? Perhaps he wanted to play with you, to taunt you. Xenophobia? Maybe he didn't like you because you're foreign. Um, I may be wrong, but... Maybe by provoking you, he was looking for glory? All these theories should be studied. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Why did the murderer make a mistake in the address? Um... Okay, um... The mistake was intentional. It's not because Hercule Poirot is not very well known. Is everything clear now? Hmm. You might like to explain your reasoning again. Of course. First of all, remember that the murderer made it a rule to always post his letter before the murder. He never digressed from that rule. However, in Cheston, he encountered a problem. The village has only 500 inhabitants. With advance warning, it would be easy to arrest him. Therefore, the murderer delayed his letters deliberately with the wrong address. The plan wouldn't have worked if he'd sent it to Scotland Yard or the papers because everybody knows their addresses. The mistake would have been corrected and the letter would have been on time. That is why the murderer chose me as the recipient. Because for his plan to succeed, it was necessary for at least one of the letters to have a wrong address and get lost. It was very cunning. Absolutely. It is a very subtle plan. It matches the profile we have drawn up of him perfectly. That of an intelligent, daring and calculating murderer. But that's not how you describe Cust. You are quite right, mm. mademoiselle. Like you, I find it hard to believe that this dull character is the clever murderer we are looking for. Do madmen... I mean, if he's mad, he might have two very different sides. No doubt. But the murderer is not mad. All the specialists agree that he does not have the profile of a psychopath. But if Cust is not guilty, how do you explain his presence at the scene of the crimes? Mr. Clark, the answer to your question is in the medical records of your brother's patients. Documents which Cust most certainly did not have access to. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Yay! Clues. What do we know about Cust? Uh, Custman, uh, is mentally fragile and easy to manipulate. Yes, how do we explain? <laughs> Finally. Sorry about that. Um, Custman was manipulated by the killer. Dr. Clark's patient's records provided a very useful list of potential victims, sorted by alphabetical order. The killer definitely used it, explaining the fact that all the victims were former patients of the doctor. 
It is this fact that clears cast once and for all, because he never had access to these records. So how did he happen to be at the scene of the crimes? Either the murderer sent him there, or Cus was following him closely. Cus's highly suggestible nature leads us to the second hypothesis. The murderer was manipulating him. He systematically sent Cus to the towns where he was going to strike, so that the suspicion would land on the poor man's shoulder. That's evil! What sort of killer could have such a plan? And what would he gain from three completely different murders? Indeed, it seems unlikely that the same murderer committed all the crimes. What should we take from that? Alright. Um, say that just one murder is in the interest of the killer. Say that the murderer kills for pleasure. Say that the killer has developed taste for murder. Say that there are three murderers. Hmm. Hmm. brain hurts um i want to say that it's say that there's one murder just one murder is of interest to the killer but i'm also interested in saying that there are three murders but that may not necessarily be true um say that the murderer kills for pleasure say that the killer develops taste for murder i think i think this one's the more correct just one murder was of benefit to the murderer. The others were just diversions. On reflection, there is only one conclusion. The murderer killed once out of interest and twice to divert our attention. This reasoning points at two potential culprits. Franklin Clark. Donald Fraser? Yes, mademoiselle. That's good thinking. Mr. Fraser may have killed Betty out of jealousy. Mr. Clark may have killed his brother in order to inherit his large fortune. Both have a motive. But Donald did not have access to Dr. Clark's records. Please allow me to disagree with you, mademoiselle. He works for Court and Brunskill, oh. one of whose clients was Sir Carmichael. It doesn't prove that I went to Combside. You could have done it, and you may have used the opportunity to take a look at Sir Carmichael's records. You think I'm guilty? You, or Mr. Franklin Clark. That's ridiculous! Both of you have a motive. The question is, which of you has the profile that most resembles the murderer? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Hmm. <sighs> Is Donald clever? Nearly done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Donald may share many character traits with the murderer, but he does not have his cold indifference. He has a temper. It is hard to imagine him planning anything. Also, jealousy is his motive, and crimes of passion are rarely planned. Right, I suppose it's my turn to be subjected to the same scrutiny. Absolutely, Mr. Clark. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
All right, nearly there. As you have all seen, there is a disturbing similarity between Mr. Clark's profile and that of the killer. In actual fact, it is exactly the same. Mr. Poirot, your psychological studies are interesting, but your conclusions do not add up. Why would I have wished my brother's death? The inheritance is lawfully mine. I just have to wait. No, you had to act quickly. Hmm. Because of Miss Gray. <gasps> yes. Mademoiselle, also you haven't been telling the truth. There is no doubt in my mind that you would have found a way to marry Sir Carmichael after Lady Clark's death. For you, Mr. Clark, it was a disaster. If Miss Gray had children by your brother, you would not have inherited a thing. You realize the danger after reading several letters from Comside, especially one in which your brother opened his heart to you. So you hurried home from China, and you took action. In truth, Kirst was no more than a puppet manipulated by the real culprit. You, Mr. Clark. Such an imagination, Mr. Poirot. In fact, nobody manipulated Kirst. The famous instructions he received by post. He wrote them on the typewriter. We know that for sure. Oh, no. You know perfectly well. That is not true. Eh bien, voilà. Light has now been shed on the ABC murders. Your theories are ingenious, but you haven't any proof. One point to him. For the moment, I have no material proof. Either I admit to it, or I bluff. Proof is easy to find now that we know where to look. You have nothing on me. You're bluffing, Mr. Poirot. Come on, Thora, there's nothing for us to do here. Don't touch me. Thora. I understand why you never wanted to lend me your new typewriter. And why you were searching through your brother's things. And the hole you dug on the moors. What did you hide there? The knife you used to kill your brother? All right. Well played. I lose. The game's up. Yay! Woo! We're so nearly done. I promise. And I know this is a very long Don't one. So I will probably cut it in half. I'll never let you take me, Mr. Poirot. And this is why we loaded it with blanks. Yay, blanks. It didn't work. I'm sorry, Mr. Clark, there is no easy death for you. I expected your reaction, so I used blanks. I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but your second chance has been lost. Franklin Clark will never inherit his brother's fortune. Disappointed at having missed the chance to become Lady Clark, Thora Gray left England. Donald Fraser and Megan Barnard married. On Poirot's recommendation, Mary Drower started to work for Lady Clark. The elderly lady's condition suddenly took a turn for the better. And a few months later, to Dr. Logan's great surprise, she was back on her feet again. According to this eminent physician, it appears to be an extremely rare case of spontaneous remission. Ooh. Lady Clark has enjoyed very good health ever since. Journal of an Innocent. The incredible story of ABC. As for AB <laughs> Cust, after being advised by Poirot, 
he made a great deal of money by selling his story to the press. And as for me, and with business booming, the Black Swan has become the number one tourist attraction in the whole of Yorkshire, even more popular than York Minster. Okay, I think it might be done. Um, I'm gonna wait for this to load. Okay, these uh, it is based on the novel. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna let the credit run uh, go on, and uh, thank you guys for going on the meandering adventure that this was. Goodbye, good night. I'm sorry, I I screwed up your day. Um. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like, dislike, um, constructive criticism.